I want to welcome everybody to the Miley of Photos Coffee Break. My name is Angela Andrew, and I'm joined by Lori Rubin today. She's going to be helping out in the chat. And our job is to help you be successful with Miley of Photos and make sure you're getting the most out of the program and also to answer your questions. So we're going to dive into today's topic. But if you have questions, please feel free to interrupt me. I don't mind at all. And we'll also have time at the end for some Q&A. But for now, let's go ahead and dive in to changing the dates on scan photos. So let me go ahead and share my screen and we'll start there. Okay, so when you scan pictures into your computer, they're gonna come in and be created with today's date. So if you scan pictures today, they're gonna have today's date. And if you look at some of the pictures I have up on the screen right now, these are obviously not current photos. So what we wanna do is correct those dates or get them as close to correct as possible within my Leo photos. What this does is it makes them show up in the right place on your life calendar. It makes them sort correctly by date. And it also saves that information to the metadata so other applications can read that information as well. So let me show you how I do that. I'm gonna start here in the all photos view and we can navigate to a folder here using the folders view, but I'm gonna do this here just from all photos and kind of throw in a couple other little tips along the way. So I'm gonna open up the left sidebar here and go down to by folder right here and into my fast photo folder, which fast photo is a brand of scanner that I have. It's an Epson scanner. That's awesome. And I have all these pictures that my mom gave me that I scanned in. So let's go ahead and scroll down here and take a look at some of these images. Now I'm going to make this grid a little bit smaller, grab the slider here on the left and just drag this down so we can see everything. When I scan in a group of images, one of the first things I do is mark them as undated. So if I had scanned these today, they would all have today's date and that would be incorrect for everything here. So you can do a command or control A to select everything. Everything that's selected will have that blue border. And then we can go over to our right sidebar, go down to the date created, click on the ellipses, scroll down to the bottom and just choose undated. And what that's gonna do is that's going to pull off today's date or whatever date you scan them and just mark them as undated. And this makes a really convenient to-do list for you because then you can go over to the life calendar, scroll up to the very top, and you see you have this handy undated category. And this for me works as kind of a to-do list. So all of the pictures that I know that I need to do a little bit more research on are here. And I can go in there and do that bit by bit as I have time. So for right now, let's work on this particular group of images and correct a few of these dates. Now I've gone through and done a few of these already. For instance, let me go ahead and click on this one here. And this is my grandma here in the middle and my great grandparents. And this particular picture has the year and the month stamped on the side of the image. We're not always so lucky to have that information, but when we do, we can add that into Mylio Photos. So you can see here, I have added in month and year. If you don't see that option popping up right here, you can click on the ellipses and scroll down to month and year. And then you just select the month and the year that that belongs to. So now when I go to my calendar, this particular image is gonna show up in November of 1936. So that makes it much, much easier to find. And it also shows up in my life and in my history where it's supposed to. Let's go ahead and jump back here. I have a couple here from, this is also um, from my grandma. I don't know which little girl she is in here. I think I could pick her out, but I'm not entirely sure. I need to actually ask her or ask my mom, which one is my grandma? Cause I haven't face tagged it yet, but we see here that this was taken in January of 1938. Right now I have this marked as undated. So let's go ahead and click on that ellipses. We're gonna go to month and year, and we're gonna choose January right there and 1938. And let's scroll, scroll, scroll. All right, I went right past it. There we go, January 1938 and save. And now that's going to show up in the right place on the calendar. Now, if we go to the next image here, this was the next year, so it says grade seven. Also, my grandma wrote in 1939 here. So I don't know exactly what month this was taken, but let's go ahead and correct this to the correct year. I'm gonna go ahead and grab that ellipses. And in this case, we're just gonna select year. And we're gonna go ahead and scroll down to 1939. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Right there, and click save. And now this image is gonna show up in the correct place on the calendar, which makes it much, much easier to find. 
Now let's go ahead and do something that's a little bit more less, or a little bit less specific, not more specific, less specific. I'm gonna grab this image here. This is also my grandma. And I know that she was born in 1927. And given the age and the size of this little girl here, I'm gonna guess this was, she's probably 18 months, two years old. So we can pretty, pretty squarely say that this was in the 20s. I don't know what month, I don't even know specifically what year, but we can go ahead and choose the decade. So again, I'm gonna go over here to the ellipses, go down here to decade and scroll back to the 1920s. Now, if you see, um, this only goes back right now to the 1920s. If you go ahead and select that, I can actually click into this and type in a different decade if I need. So if you know that you have something from, let's say the 1860s, you can simply go into this field now that you have the correct format in there and say 1860s. In this case, I'm still gonna wanna keep this 1920s. So let's go ahead and put that back. But just know that you can go in there and type in those changes too. You just wanna make sure you have it already selected to the right format. There we go. That's correct. So, I mean, that's really it. Changing the date on pictures is really quite simple in Mylio Photos. Let's take a look at some of the other options we have here, just so you understand what the difference is. If you click on that ellipses and scroll back up here to the top, shift, this one is probably not gonna be used so much for scan family photos, but this is really helpful if you have um, date and time set in your camera, maybe you go to a different time zone on vacation, and then all of those pictures are off by let's say eight hours. Well, you can just go in here and shift the time of all of those pictures, select all the pictures that are affected and shift them by eight hours. So that comes in really helpful for that. Timestamp is gonna be when you wanna actually put in a month, day, year, and all the way down to the second. So this gives you a very, very specific time. This is like the timestamp that your phone or your camera pops into a picture. I'll go ahead and cancel out of that for a second. We have month and year, which we talked about. Season and year is really helpful. So let's say you're looking at pictures and it's obviously Christmas time. So we know it's winter, at least if you're in the Northern hemisphere. So you can go ahead and put in winter of whatever year it is. And if you are in different parts of the world and you, de you define your seasons a little bit differently, you can tell Milio which season is which. So if you go up here to your settings and go into, I believe it's under life calendar, Seasons right there, you can change what dates are the start of each season. So depending on where you are in the world, you can customize this. All right, let me back out of there. So we talked about season and year. We talked a bit about choosing just a year, a decade. And again, if you aren't sure, simply mark it as undated. You can always go back and change that later. And that works as like a to-do list for your research. And that's it. Changing the dates in photos is really quite simple and very flexible inside of Milio Photos. Once those dates are correct, you can always jump over to your life calendar and see all of those pictures where they correctly show up on the calendar. When you're here in the all photos view, go ahead and clear out that filter. You can also filter by date. So I can go down here and go to the by date and by year. And I can find everything from, let's say, the 20s or from the 30s. So depending on how you've gone through and how many of those types of images you have, they're very easy to find. And by correcting those dates, they show up in the right place. So that's it for today. Very, very quick and simple lesson. I hope it was helpful and gave you some ideas of how to work with your own images. And with that, I want to open up the floor to questions. I'm sorry, I have a question. When you have the the fuzzy dates corrected, right, the, mm -hmm. either the uh, decade or whatever, mm -hmm. and uh, you said that the, the date is safe into the metadata so other applications can read it. Mm -hmm. How will you record that those fuzzy dates so other applications can understand them? So it depends on if the other application supports fuzzy dates and if they read that format. We've made it as standardized as possible, but unfortunately most applications do not support that. Mm -hmm. um, one thing you can do is if you have something where you do need it to show in another application and it's not showing the fuzzy date, you can go in and add a timestamp instead. So the timestamps, definitely everything can read because that's got the year, month, day and everything down to the minute and second. Um, but the fuzzy dates, it really depends on the application. 
not many of them are set up to read those fuzzy dates. So that's a really good question. Okay. But it is saved in the metadata. So it's it's preserved even outside of Mylio, just not many of them support it. Um, and for question about those fuzzy dates, a lot of times people ask what this symbol is here on the bottom of their pictures. That is indicating that there's a fuzzy date. And a fuzzy date is a non-specific date. So anything that's from you know, just a day, month, and year, and you omit the minutes, seconds, and hours. Anything from that up to choosing a decade or undated is considered a fuzzy date. And we'll have this little equivalent icon in the bottom right corner. Okay. If you don't like seeing that, I believe we can turn it off by going up here to annotation and turning off the indicator there for fuzzy date. I like having it on. It lets me know that I've added specific information there, but it's up to you what you want to see. Great question okay. though. Thank you. You're very welcome. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah, Angela, it's a, we have a couple of questions in the chat box. All right, let's see here. Can you describe how the different date formats are stored in metadata? We just talked about that. All right, uh, can we do bulk changes? Absolutely. So let me go back here. I'm gonna clear out that filter and go back up to my main folder here. And let's change a few of these together. I'm gonna go down here to, you know, there's some images. Here we go. Here's a bunch of images. I know these were all from the 80s. Let's go all the way up through there. Those are all from the 80s. And right now I have them all marked as undated. So let me grab that ellipsis, choose decade, and I can scroll back to the 1980s, save. And now that's been changed on that entire group of selected images. So the way I did, what, did that was I held down the, I clicked the first image in the series. So right there, you can see it has the blue border. And then to do a series of images that are all next to each other, you just hold down the shift key and click the last image. And now that entire group has been selected and then you can make those changes. If you wanna make changes to images that are not necessarily next to each other. So let's say we wanna grab that one and that one and that one, you hold down the control or the command key and then select the images that you wanna select. All right. Oh, one other quick little tip is if you're doing this on a mobile device, and you wanna select multiple images. So that selecting on a, a touchscreen device works a little bit differently. Instead of just clicking on something, you would click and hold or tap and hold, and that's gonna bring up the selection menu. Then down at the bottom, it'll, be, it'll say range or done. If you wanna select ones that are not next to each other, so like I was doing here, like so, you would just tap, once that selection mode is enabled, you would just tap on each image you wanna select. If you wanna select a range of images, for instance, this image here down to here, on a touch screen device, you would click range, tap the first image, and then tap the last image, it would select that range. Once you've done whatever you need to do with that selection, you click done at the bottom, and there you go. If that's something that's interested of interest to a lot of you, let me know, and we can maybe do um, a mobile only uh, version of this at some later date. All right, well, Thank you all for joining me today. It's been fun. I hope this was informative to you. And if there's anything else that you'd like to see us cover in a coffee break, please don't hesitate to reach out to me in the community. You can send me a direct message or a co uh, comment on one of my posts or on one of our recordings from a previous coffee break. I always love to hear from you guys and get new ideas. So with that, I want to wish you a wonderful rest of your day and we'll see you next week.